listening to the NXT Podcast, your home for weekly NXT reviews and insight. The beautiful part of NXT is that when one dream ends, another dream begins. Find all of your NXT news, recaps, and analysis right here. So with that being said, we only have one question for you. Are you ready? We thought so. Let's get the show started right now. All right, everyone, this is Memphis Mark coming to you from Mullet Manor, and we're coming in to you a little late. That's right. I did this stupid thing and tried to travel during the 4th of July break. Lesson learned. We'll never do that again. (laughs) But we will still go in to the NXT that happened on 7-2. And this is 7-4. And happy July 4th to everyone out there from Mullet Manor. And uh, they're getting ready for uh, Heat Wave this Sunday. And, of course, money in the bank. Uh, But, yeah, they start off with a straight fight with uh, OTM's representative, Jada Parker, going against the OC's representative, Mi Chen. And, uh, man, Mi Chen comes in with all of the weapons. Now, Jada Parker comes in with a bat. And I got to say, this was not a bad match at all. This was a pretty good, a great opening match, man. Uh, Lots of weapons. Mi Chen brings them all in. Uh, uh, everybody gets involved. It's, uh, you know, uh, both of these ladies can perform. Mi Chen is just freaking great. And uh, Jada Parker is getting that way. Uh, uh, you know, even from the start, Jada swings the bat and Mi Chen blocks with a garbage can. And, and Jada Parker reacts off the vibration that you would get off of that, which is understandable. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything looks good. You know, Mrs. Keith Lee, I mean, me Chen, uh, she, she, uh, she represented really good. But in this match, they are giving the push to Jada Parker right now. And Jada Parker is going to end up with a win in this one, uh, you know, and, and she does. But in, in this, now she knees Mi Chen through uh, the wall there, the barrier uh, around between the crowd and everything. So, uh, I mean, a good brawn breaker, you know, flashback kind of, you know, a couple slips up. But, some, but, I mean, you know, I mean, all in all, this is a good match. I mean, Jada does get the win in this, but Mi Chen represents – Oh, really good. Uh, and then they've, uh, they've got Carmen and, uh, and Ariana Grace in the locker room, you know, and uh, she's complaining. Carmen listens, uh, you know, and, and uh, they're both apparently from Canada, and they're not going to be able to go to this upcoming event in Toronto. Uh, so, you know, they make a couple of remarks. Uh, you're going to have J.C. Jane and Izzy Dane come in uh, with their uh, STP mask, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, they're uh, they're not as Canadian as each other, and uh, there's a future fight there. Uh, see, from there we've got the young OG promo. Uh, look, and and you know, uh, besides the young man needs to, we need to get that man to a buffet or somewhere, put some weight on him, because he is spectacular. Uh, and getting better on his uh, 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 time on on uh, you know his TV time his interview time, uh, and he kind of in this um, you know in this little uh, promo he he lets them know hey look I'm so young I ain't never had a passport to go up to Canada you know so but he ain't scared is what he said. <laughs> he ain't scared so we will see what's upcoming for him young OG getting the big push. Uh, but then we got our second match, which is the new Catch Republic. That's uh, Tyler Bate, the big strong boy, and Pete Dunn uh, going against Hank and Tank <laughs> with their ACDC logo wear on, uh, you know. And But I got to say, folks, Hank and Tank really, really uh, showed up and they showed out. Uh, they've surprised me, uh, you know, uh, Hank's gotten a lot better, 
uh, his ring present, his selling, uh, and and Tank man, this this dude has come on like gangbusters, man. He is a natural. Uh, just really, really surprised me. And, you know, uh, with the big strong boy and uh, Pete Dunn, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a good match, and it was uh, all the way through. And they let, they wrote this match good. I will say that the ending was good. Uh, nothing major to report bad in here. Some good moves. Uh, it looked a little bit like maybe the big strong boy may have gotten a little injured towards the end there. They sold that well, so... Hey, uh, good match. Uh, something to go back and check out. Faux show. Uh, and and then you've got the, old, uh, the chairman of the board, Sean Spears, doing a little promo, you know, talking about, you know, he wants the guide and to teach the young. Uh, and I hope he does that on the 4th of July because somewhere out there, somebody's going to be one finger shy at the end of the day there. Nine fingers, that's right. Uh, but anyway, no, Sean Spears does a good little promo. Uh, can't say anything bad. Uh, they've got uh, they've got Stevie and Mr. Stone doing a little promo with Mensa announcing to him uh, that apparently his visa is not good and he cannot go into Canada or whatever. He will not be at heat wave uh and they've got uh brinley uh going against izzy dame uh and you know she's got a nofi and blade out there with her and but uh, izzy's a big a big tall girl i believe she's about 5 10 man and really building her presence you know but uh and brinley uh, has flashes you know has flashes but Definitely, both of these ladies need the ring time, and the match was, uh, was okay. But then they bring in the wild card. That's Tatum Paxley, and she slithers in, kind of freaks everybody out, uh, and makes a good representation. Uh, I guess you could say, uh, you know, uh, kind of gives uh, Izzy Dame the little freak out there. Uh, so yeah, uh, and Tatum Paxley showing up and showing out herself. Uh, there we go. Um, yes, then we have Chase U doing their promo with Duke and Ridge and Andre and Thea and, and Raleigh. And, uh, they kind of, they kind of show that, you know, Ridge did help, uh, help them win that match last week. So, uh, it was undisputed truth. Uh, so yeah, okay, you know, but uh, they they told Ridge pretty much, hey man, you're not going to Heat Wave. Uh, so kind of a theme t- tonight of people announcing that they won't be there. So um, yeah, but uh, from there we have the you know the uh, the exciting Lola Vice coming out uh hola uh and uh, she calls out uh you know roxanne uh the prodigy and uh, of course she has some security with her and uh you know they do uh they do a pretty good uh a little um uh time on the stick you know uh, lola though goes into and does a crying routine which it did not befit her uh to me but uh, she did the best with what she was probably told to do. And, uh, you know, they both go back and forth uh, with each other. You know, it's kind of a bad script a little bit in that, you know. But Nilola's talking about her mom being pregnant and becoming the fourth master and her with Black Belt with her Taekwondo. And then, uh, you know, uh, 18 starts, I think, in the MMA or whatever. And, you know, but she was saying that she's going to take, uh, take the belt. And uh, she was going to be the first Cuban crossover MMA world NXT champion. And uh, uh, Roxanne, you know, does pretty good. Uh, Gives her a little, uh, (laughs) you know, a little lesson herself. Uh, In the end, you know, Lola's going to uh, hit a spinning back fist on one of uh, Roxanne's security Knocking down a big gentleman, and uh, Roxanne's mad, and they go from there. Eh, you know, it was okay, little spot. Okay. Uh, Ethan Page, after that, though, does a promo. Uh, had some of his old 
footage uh, from the indie days and, uh, you know, a different looking Ethan Page. Uh, but, you know, hey, he is uh, he's ready to take uh, take on uh, the Canadian, uh, you know, prodigy or the Canadian uh, monarcher, monarcher um, you know, but uh, are the Canadians invading, you know, in some way? <laughs> I'm not sure how that works. But Ethan Page, pretty good on the stick, uh, you know, good little listen. Um, after that, they've got the No Quarter Catch Crew. And, uh, you know, it's, they, they're kind of looking like they're slowly pushing Damon Kemp out, uh, you know. And, and, you know, they got Jason uh, and uh, Tavon. Tavon's helping them get ready, doing a little warm-up and everything. But Damon tries to introduce some brass knuckles in, and and they do it kind of odd and this is kind of odd but Dempsey does a good spot with his and you know uh, they do you know they do an okay spot I guess you could say uh and then they they have a little spot with Eddie Thorpe and Eddie Thorpe is apparently rocking a rave out or a club out somewhere until the mid hours of the morning and a couple of the ladies, uh, the young wrestlers there, or people there at NXT, were happened to be at the event, and they're talking about it. And here comes Lexus King over to pretty much represent some of my music, something like I would say, oh, yeah. But uh, they have a pretty good little going back and forth. But uh, you know where this is leading. We're going to have some uh, series of matches with Eddie Thorpe and uh, Lexus King coming up. A faux show. Uh, let me see. After that, you've got, uh, you know, aforementioned Jason Bourne uh, with uh, the No Quarter Catch crew coming out to take on Aura Mensa from Metaphor. And, uh, you know, he's been, I think he's been fighting on that uh, or doing the, the fast, uh, you know, brand a little bit. And look, man, Aura is good. Uh, if you haven't seen him go, man, he is good. Uh, has uh, a pretty decent amount of ring time himself, you know, and uh, uh, definitely more experience than Jason Bourne. Uh, but, man, Bourne has got a drop kick that is just out of this world. Uh, might I say a little Randy Ortonish? You know, uh, he definitely has some been watching some tapes of the Viper because that's where he takes some of his characteristics. But, uh, man, uh, uh, Aura pulls off a big moonsault, but he didn't do it as crisp as like an AJ Styles or a Ricochet does. But, man, you know, really good. Uh, but because of the distraction from Damon Kemp trying to introduce these doggone brass knuckles. Uh, he gets a distraction from Jason Bourne, and Aura gets to uh, do a big kick and uh, pulls off the win. Uh, so you got Aura winning that one, and he's happy, happy, happy. Uh, <laughs> and then we go to a Wesley promo about the upcoming. North American title match, and uh, you know, uh, you know, he does pretty good. Uh, but they got he, of course, he's talking about Big Obafemi, and the big man. Uh, you know, so uh, they got to bring the big man out there and show a little bit of that. So, uh, and, uh, this should be, you know, Wes does great, and he he plays the underdog really good. So, you know, this should be fine. Uh, I would think. Um, you know, but we'll see. We'll see how this pulls out. Um, uh, I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. But yeah, we got Obafemi and Wesley with the stipulation that Wesley cannot challenge for the belt if he does not win, as long as Obafemi is the actual champ. Uh, all right. Uh, from there, they got Brent, uh, Brinley and Anofi and Blade and, uh, is it the big split? It looks like it's the big split. Could be the big split. Not sure if it's a big split, but they're kind of portraying it as the big split. So I guess we'll see from there on. Uh, and then we have the new 
uh, villain, underlord, uh, underground, uh, 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 emperor of the night, Wendy Chu, going against Carly Bright. And, uh, you know, Wendy Chu, uh, I, I kind of like the new look, as I've said before. Uh, I, I'm kind of liking uh, what they're doing with her, uh, she does uh, good work. Uh, man, she the, the her whole new gimmick is good. Coming out on the dark side, I mean, she comes out uh, uh, with smoke and got the funny uh, makeup on her eyes and the, the makeup on her face, and the, now the darker side of Wendy Choo. Uh So yeah, um, you know, I, I kind of like it. Uh, it would have what did her. Um, her eye covers, her sleep covers, uh, her sleep mask said, uh, sad inside, I believe, or something like that. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, she's got the whole, uh, the plan, the whole thing out. Right. Uh, and she, uh, you know, <laughs> looks good in this match. I can't say anything about it, uh, with her entrance in. And then of course she kind of, uh, freaks Carly bright out several times. Um, you know, Carly does try, to pull off a, fo- a few moves, but uh, they're countered. I mean, she goes into some pins and some some basic roll ups and stuff like that. But you know, Wendy always uh, you know seems to top her and seems to be in the uh, uh, in the lead. And uh, yeah, she uh, <laughs> puts a little whooping on her. Puts a little whooping on her. All right. Uh, yeah, but in the end, Wendy's gonna you know choke her out and submit her do a long kind of strange pause uh and uh you know they go off to a uh you know a little spot with with trick doing a little talking uh you know about him and javon coming up uh so yeah um let's see here and, you know and it was okay uh the promo was but then they go from there they've got uh jasmine nix uh, going up against Miss Karen uh, Petrovich. Uh, and, of course, J.C. Jane is going to be involved uh, in this uh, with her SDP mask. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, uh, she's getting better. Uh, Jasmine's starting to get the look. She doesn't have the, the, the quite the skill with the mics yet, uh, with the stick yet. Uh, you know, and that'll come with time. She just needs, you know. Uh, it's it's one thing to pull that off when you're in front of everybody or doing the classes, but when you get out in front of a crowd and the energy and get caught up in the moment, I'm sure that can change uh, uh, your aspect or your or your philosophy. <laughs> you come in with a plan and everything goes out the window. Uh, but yeah, this match, uh, you know, you, you can't complain. Uh, that, well, they got ready to start this match. And then uh, before they do, uh, they do an odd little thing to where they they kind of they kind of out Brooks Jensen, uh, you know, saying he's you know uh, believed to have been drinking and rehab, uh, uh, you know, uh, just uh, how everybody's been trying to help him, and he won't take the help. Um, you know, they're exploiting this, and, and, I mean, with modern technology now, they can make it look really real and make this look really good. But uh, where are they taking this angle? You know, uh, are they going to make him in, too? Are they, is this going to be his big push after rehab? They're going to bring him out, and he's going to be this rough, tough uh, son of a gun that doesn't drink anymore? Uh, what are they doing? Because they would not be. Uh, just throwing this out there. Uh, there's a plan behind here somewhere. I just uh, uh, wish them the best uh, with this because that's a slippery slope uh, that you're going down there when you uh, start bringing this up. But, yes, we'll go back now into the match, though, with uh, Jasmine Nixon, Miss uh, Karen uh, Petrovich, and, uh, you know, with her, Karen, with uh, Carmen, I mean. I'm sorry, I said Karen, Carmen. Uh, with her martial arts background, you know, she can make uh, a series of moves look good, you know, put together a string of offense and everything. But uh, you got to have both. Everybody's got to have timing together. And, 
yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, uh, with JC's, you know, is going to interfere in this, and you know how this is going to turn out. So they let both the ladies get some ring time and 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 let Carmen uh, uh, get a chance to look good. But uh, yeah, uh, Jasmine's going to end up winning this one, folks. Uh, then they go from there. They've got Axiom and Nathan. Are we watching um, the split up? Well, another split up today. Yeah. Is this going to be the split? You know, uh, really wanting to go after the speed title, uh, the, uh, the Heritage Cup. Uh, is Nathan spreading himself too thin? Uh, where are they going with this? What are they doing? <laughs> we won't know. Uh, but we will definitely find out uh in the future that's for sure uh but let me see uh they get through with this match and you know i uh i'll go into it in a minute but that, i was also looking at some of this nil stuff because i was trying to see if any of these uh people currently on the roster were uh, originally on the nil uh a roster of what they were doing so uh and i'll go into that in just a second uh but yeah in this match you know of course uh jc jane pulling that off uh you, and like i said you've got axiom and uh nathan is this the split that we've all been waiting on and let's see uh i want to make sure i get all this covered uh man uh they were we're going over the highlights also of the paul Heyman debacle Man, uh, wow. Well, they really played that out <laughs> very good. And going to get their monies run on that, uh, especially as many commercials as they had. Uh, then you got to have your uh, Ava minute out there. So Ava and Carmen. Carmen's mad about uh, what just happened in the match. And, of course, Amanda Grace comes out and gets involved. And uh, it's the Canadian thing again. Uh, so... You know, they go from that. Uh, they do a Sol Ruka uh, promo of her on the beach, doing all these exercises. Yes, yes, yes. It looks good. Uh, they're just they're really playing up the gymnastics part uh, with uh, Lana Jordan and then now Sol. Uh, you know, uh, Sol is looking better, but, you know, her timing's still off. So, you know, we will see, uh, you know, where that goes for sure. Uh, but then they're going to have uh, the contract signing. Uh, you know, um, <laughs> another contract signing. Well, whenever they bring out, well, they got Ethan Page out there, uh, they bring Trick out, which, you know, I guess somewhat out of this four-way, uh, I don't know, Sean Spears would definitely be, Probably Sean Spears and Ethan Page would be the top uh, two going at it right there. But uh, they start off with Ethan Page and Trick, and they, you know, they go back and forth, and it's okay. Uh, it, it just everything seems to, it's at this time, it, it's so scripted. Now, Ethan Page can pull it off. Now you've got Sean Spears out there, Javon Evans. Uh, yeah. This is all leading to a. Uh, <laughs> you know a throwdown this is always what this comes to you know and of course you're going to have the quote unquote good guys uh end up having to fight the bad guys uh i mean i understand why they did this and i mean it's good writing it's kind of like going back to the old playbook or whatever like that but uh it gives everybody a chance i guess to get us uh, some stick time a little tv time there and and have a chance to shine uh so you know i understand it but it just seems like whoever um uh, you know they i mean i guess they did good you got uh javon and trick end up uh standing side by side at the end with ethan and uh sherman or sherman <laughs> sean spears uh both laid out and of course you know javon was to look at the belt trick snatched the belt you know so yeah, uh, they kind of go off air, you know, like that. So, you know, uh, okay, and I guess you could say, I mean, I can't complain, you know, uh, who would listen if I did, but, uh, you know, uh, uh, just would have thought maybe a little bit better, but uh, it is what it is. But uh, let me see, what did I find on that NIL? 
Oh yeah, here it is. Um, this is a, a just a quote from the WWE, and it is the following: is a historic new policy by the N- NAACP uh, or NCAA, excuse me, uh, effective July first, twenty twenty one, which ushered in the NIL era, along with college athletes' ability to monetize their name, image, and likeness. So uh, WWE has constructed a a comprehensive (laughs) program to recruit and develop potential future superstars, dubbed the next in line. So, uh, yeah, I mean, they're uh, they're trying this out. Uh, I don't understand it completely, but I have been doing some more reading in it. And pretty much they're just handpicking people that they think uh, have the potential uh, to be a superstar. Uh, you know, the athletic abilities there. So then I guess they try to, uh, if the athletics there, then I guess they think that they can teach, uh, the rest down in Orlando, Florida at the WWE performance center. So, uh, you know, select athletes, uh, may earn an exclusive opportunity to be offered a WWE contract and they get training in, uh, uh, building a brand, uh, media training, communications, live event promotions, creative writing, and community relations. So, I don't know. Uh, we'll see how this goes. It is the future. It is here. And all the people that are saying they hate it, well, uh, it's just the way it is. Uh, so, you can do what you want to do. But I tell you what, guys, this is going to be it for me on July 4th, this special late edition. And I got to say, I apologize. It's so late. But I would like to thank everybody in the airline industry that screwed everything up. Okay. Uh, so, yes, guys, I uh, this is <laughs> Memphis Mark. And, hey, you know, uh, get out there and enjoy yourself. Don't get too hot. Thank you for in, uh, for indulging us for a little while and listening. And as always, I will end with, if you can, get out and help a shelter. Do what you can, when you can, while you can. And always spay and neuter. And uh, this is Memphis Mark. And as always, happy 4th of July, guys. And uh, I am out. Thanks for listening to the WWE Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you don't miss a show. Or head to WWEpodcast.com. And for all of these shows ad-free, head over to Patreon.com slash WWEpodcast. Until then, we'll see you next time.